In this talk, we are going to speak about the current state of affairs in neurosymbolic artificial intelligence. So in neurosymbolic artificial intelligence, one of the key things is to integrate symbolism and connectionism in artificial intelligence robust models. So we are going to skim over these fields here briefly in this talk. We are going to speak about the importance of building multimodal neurosymbolic AI models, and we revisit some of the grand challenges for neurosymbolic artificial intelligence, and we conclude this talk. So this talk is based on neurosymbolic AI, the third wave, a recent paper that we published, uh, uh, Arthur Garces and myself. So if we can look back at the current literature, uh, several papers have been written about uh, the need of building systems that are more semantically sound and they offer guarantees uh, to users in terms of uh, using artificial intelligence. And we have been claiming that in order to build such systems, we need to build uh, in machine learning the same rigor that we have developed for programming language semantics. So when programmers, they develop their programs, they have ways of checking the meanings of programs and verifying if the programs will behave in the way that we expect they using techniques such as model checking. So we also believe that in neurosymbolic AI, we can advance the field of AI by offering such alternatives to machine learning systems. So also already in 2017, the Royal Society published uh, a significant report on the power and promise of machine learning. And some of the challenges pointed out by the Royal Society, by a group of experts, were issues such as interpretability, verification, validation, and causality, human-machine interaction, fairness, and security. And we claim that by using neurosymbolic AI techniques, some of these issues can be tackled. Some of the issues can have positive responses. Also, very recently, even the, the, the proponents of large language models or the so-called foundation models, uh, they published a paper uh, in February 2023 saying that, for instance, in domains like healthcare, we have to pay attention to some of the issues that are still open with respect to using large language models widely in such applications. Also, the issue of misinformation and the issue of disinformation is something that we have to consider in current AI technologies because the public is making more and more uh, wide uses and applications and deployments of artificial intelligence, in particular language models. Thus, the question, does the need for developing semantic models based on logic-based techniques? Also, from a philosophical standpoint, uh, Pierre Lévy, the philosopher that brought us the concept of collective intelligence, he has claimed that uh, we need to build a proper semantic foundation for current models of artificial intelligence and neurosymbolic AI can provide some answers towards this direction. So what do we do in neurosymbolic AI? How will one can harness the power of logic and learning in such models? In the very early history, of computer science, we had already names such as von Neumann, who realized that um, underlying the logic of automata or underlying the logic of the early um, artificial neural network models of McCulloch and Peetz, we could see a different kind of logics. And um, von Neumann realized at that time that perhaps intuitionistic logic that gives us constructive ways of building proofs of theorems could be the appropriate logic to model the reasoning process and even the learning process in artificial neural networks. Of course, von Neumann was referring um, to an early paper of McCulloch and Peetz, which was perhaps the first uh, neurosymbolic paper ever published in the 20th century, because the title of the paper already read a logical calculus of idea immanent in nervous activities. And this work was important. This work by Pitts and McCulloch influenced, for instance, the perceptor model and the early artificial neural networks from the 50s, 70s, from the 50s to the 70s, and even the early 80s. So, but giving, um, moving forward to more uh, recent history, in the early 2000s, it was not very common to find papers in which um, researchers made use of artificial intelligence uh, techniques based on neural networks in the, in the main, main AI uh, conferences. There are, of course, some exceptions. And uh, by this time, we started working on an approach that used uh, model logics and non-classical logics to model the reasoning processes in artificial neural networks. So uh, even before the so-called deep learning revolution that, of course, started 
uh, in the mid 2000s when Jeff Hinton and his collaborators uh, published uh, uh, influential papers. Some of them were published in uh, neurocomputation, such as the fast learning algorithm for deep lit nets. That seems that uh, the first time that uh, Jeff Hinton referred to, to, to deep learning. And then we started to, win, to witness the current revolution in artificial intelligence. So in, from the mid 2000s, uh, neural networks came back to the fore and people started to analyze what kind of uh, applications neural networks would, would be very effective. And today we know how the state of affairs is and we know that uh, neural networks have been widely used in many domains. And uh, moving forward, moving to more recent developments, uh, what we can see was that this realization that not only we need to have systems that are very efficient in their predictions, uh, but we also need to build systems that are uh, effi efficiently and effective from a semantic point of, of way, and also systems that whose predictions and um, are safe and whose use is safe. So. Uh, already from 2019, early 2020s, some debates, some conversations, some uh, seminars uh, have been involving prominent researchers such as Jeff Hinton, Yellen Kuhn, Yosha Benjo. Uh, there was a, a famous debate in the AAAI uh, 2020, just before the pandemic in New York City, uh, where Daniel Kahneman also took part alongside many prominent researchers coordinated by uh, Francesca Rossi. And in this debate, uh, many people, uh, the researchers put forward the quest for AI thinking fast and slow, where the thinking uh, mechanisms of AI would be based on symbolic techniques. Also, Henry Kautz, in his famous talk on the third AI summer, put forward a taxonomy for neurosymbolic AI. David Cox, also from IBM uh, Research lab in Cambridge. He made the case for neurosymbolic AI and its applications in vision, machine common sense, question answering, argumentation. There was also the famous AI debate number two, uh, organized by Montreal AI, uh, new RIPs and AAAI panels and workshops. And more recently, IBM organized uh, two workshops in 2022 and 2023, and two summer schools. By the way, the next one is coming uh, late August on the impacts of uh, current neurosymbolic AI techniques. But uh, how this field came to the fore? In 2019, there was this first AI debate uh, between um, Joshua Benjo and Gary Marcos, where Marcos made the case that uh, there is a need for hybrid techniques in artificial intelligence. Those techniques, as we have defended, are techniques that integrate logical reasoning and machine learning. And we believe that in order to build richer AI systems, such techniques have to be integrated in a way that uh, is effective, is efficient, but that also provides semantic guarantees or semantic assurances to the users. So that's what the, were the, some of the points that were made in our book, Neurosymbolic Cognitive Reasoning, where we show how to build systems that can reason using artificial neural networks, reason in a logical point of view. Also, more recently, um, the, the press has realized that uh, there are limitations in current AI technologies and that richer models need to be built. From 2020, then, some attention has been given to the semantic and reasoning component of artificial intelligence systems and reasoning in a logical perspective, a reasoning using sound techniques that we, one can derive from computer science that we have developed in computer sciences since the, the, the late 20th century. Also, companies, the, the big tech companies, are realizing that in order to provide safer applications for the users, the neurosymbolic AI techniques can be helpful in a number of applications, including program synthesis, including natural language processing, including visual interpretation, and many other domains. So, but can all these debates, can all this integration in the end of the day lead to a better science of AI? What is in the end of the day the science of AI? We believe that, uh, as Daniel Kahneman has said, that in order to build systems that are sound, and not only that they, they are good in terms of predictions, in terms of uh, statistical predictions or probabilistic predictions, we also need to systems to, to have prescriptive power. And prescriptions is typically done under a sound way, using a logical way of expressing your knowledge. And Daniel Kahneman has made this point that system one is an intuitive, fast parallel system that's capable of understanding language 
such as uh, current deep learning systems, for instance. And system two, however, is a system that's sequential, that's a reflexive system, that's most prob probably performing symbolic manipulation and logical inferences, as argued uh, as well by Gary Marcus and other and researchers. And even I can quote Canon here, that what he said at IIII 2020 is that so far as he's concerned, system one certainly knows language, and system two does involve certain manipulation of systems. So I invite you to, to have a look again at this debate at IIII 2020. That was a very important moment um, for neurosymbolic AI, where researchers you know, make forward and put forward the case for the integration of and construction of hybrid systems in artificial intelligence. So what do we do in neurosymbolic artificial intelligence? So in, in neurosymbolic AI, it's important to, to understand that learning from experience and reasoning about what has been learned from a certain environment is a complex way of building system, or pardon me, is a, is a very complex uh, task. And gathering all this information makes sense about multiple ways of perceiving the environment, perceiving uncertainties, perceiving uh, the space, and moving around this, the, the environment requires several modalities, several ways of representing reasoning, and several ways of representing the interaction that we have with this environment. So in order to learn, for instance, from changes in the environment, one can think of temporal logics and temporal reasoning. And in order to, to build systems that can, of course, perceive the environment, react to the environment, and also interact with objects in the environment, they must need some common sense knowledge, some common sense ability. They have to deal with things like space and time. They have to deal with dimensions that are different, that not only unidimensions or two dimensions, that are multidimensional. So, in, and I always make, I always make this, the, I always make this analogy about uh, building system that can, you know, have multiple uh, cognitive abilities. I also use this analogy, these examples that I had with my daughter when she was uh, very young. She once perceived that uh, we use brush her, br we used to brush her teeth when she was very young, and then she learned how to build uh, her own reasoning towards brushing the teeth of her first doll. So here she was, she was using her coordination in a wide space, in a three-dimensional space, coordinating herself and also using deduction and induction to, to realize how to build a model for brushing the teeth of another object of, an, of her doll, which was not herself. So the point here is that integrating all this perception from the environment and building reasoning systems that can, of course, deal with unpredictability and deal also with certainties and uncertainties in this environment, we need a much richer way of representing the way that systems, the way that AI agents will reason. And also, of course, the way of representing the integration of learning from the environment and reasoning within this environment. But of course, we know from results in complexity theory and in logic that reasoning can be extremely hard in AI systems and in computational systems. So how do we do that? Many people, of course, have been trying to build systems that integrate uh, logical reasoning and machine learning. For instance, there has, there has been some recent approach on logical neural networks by the IBM re uh, researchers. Our group, uh, our own group of research has been uh, working towards understanding how, uh, the, what, what are the basics of Boolean function learnability in deep neural networks. So this problem and uh, this kind of research is under investigation at the moment. So we want to get to the root of the reasoning process in artificial neural networks. Other approaches from uh, the, the, let's say from some researchers in Italian, uh, the group the, the group of Marco Gori and his collaborators has recently published a paper on logic explained networks where they build explanations by construction in their models. And of course, there is the the, the work of uh, of uh, Arthur Garces and uh, Luciano Serafini and Marco Spranger. Uh, on logic tensor networks. That's an architecture that is based on combinations of fuzzy reasoning and machine learning. So it's clear that there is a need for richer forms of integrated learning and reasoning. And this has always been the key concern, the key focus of the neurosymbolic uh, AI community, how those systems can be integrated by principle, in a principle way, and offering semantic guarantees. So the foundations of uh, neurosymbolic AI, the way that we see neurosymbolic AI is, is, uh, is building systems that have an underlying logic 
as the reasoning component. So here we need a language, as Valent has said, to describe the alternative algorithm that a network of uh, neurons would be implementing. So in our approach, what we do is we build artificial neural networks that can reason using logical rules. And those logical rules are inspired by the logical rules of logical systems. And this idea come from the 90s. In the 90s, researchers like Jeff Tawell, Jude Shavlik, Stefan Hodober, Arthur Garces, Gerson Zagarusha, those researchers, what they realized is that, well, we have a very, very efficient way of dealing with reasoning in the 90s, which was uh, the prologue language, logic programming. So what they tried to do and what they did was they started integrating logic programming and artificial neural networks, and they started to study what kind of artificial neural network model could compute a prologue problem. That was a huge step in towards building neurosymbolic AI systems. Along the same time, there were concerns about what kind of neural networks, what kind of reasoning neural networks would perform. And John McCarthy once wrote that neural networks have some propositional fixation in the sense that they could never uh, express relations. But this you know, has been proved now that neural networks are very effective to express relations. We have graph neural networks. We have all these relational models these days. And so this problem is essentially solved. We have shown in practice that artificial neural networks can indeed go beyond uh, uh, propositional logics, can go beyond uh, the logics of, uh, of simple rules that we have developed and then the kind of logic that we teach in the first semester to, to undergraduate students. So, but there, there was, a, there was a, a surge of interest in the 90s, even Jeff Hinton uh, uh, organized um, a special issue on connection in symbol processing in artificial intelligence. I mentioned already the work of Tao, Shabley, Kohlhobler, and Arthur Garces on building uh, systems that can learn uh, logic programming fragments. But uh, what is the point here? What's the point I'm trying to make in terms of multimodal reasoning? One of the key logics for knowledge representation in reasoning in computer science and in philosophy and in, in, the, in, uh, in, com in computational logic is modal logics. Those logics, as the name say, they deal with the modes of truth. And today, one of the key concerns in AI is how to build multimodal systems or multimodal interactions with large language models. So this, of course, suggests the idea that we need richer logics, richer ways of interacting. And for in order to have richer interactions with AI systems, of course, the system by principle has to be able to compute such modalities. So our in initial inspiration, and of course, today, many people are trying to, to build systems for multimodal reasoning. Uh, the idea of uh, chains of thoughts or thought changes is very prevalent in AI. For instance, those two recent papers, one by uh, no one that uh, exactly has the title learning to explain how to use multimodal reasoning in things of, in uh, chains of thought to, for question answering science. The other deals with multimodal uh, chain of thought reasoning in language models. And in order to build such systems, we believe that we need a foundation. And this foundation is gonna be given from certain perspective, from a logical point of view, by being able to represent modal logics, which are the more logic of modalities within a connection setting. So in order to build systems that can compute modal logics, we have to develop you know, the proper framework. And such, fra and such framework initially was developed to represent the most basic modalities that we have. And those basic modalities are modalities that deal with, uh, which are called the box and diagonal modality that can have many interpretations. They can be interpreted as modalities for time, modalities for knowledge, modalities for belief, modalities for uncertainty, modalities for dealing with space. So the point of modal logics is exactly the ability or exactly the formalization that those uh, logics provide for different ways of representing truths in different interpretations of reality. So in order to build a uh, connectionist model logic, that was exactly what we did from the early 2000s. We have to represent those systems and logical reasoning rules in artificial neural networks. For instance, if you take uh, temporal logics, temporal logics under a model perspective, they have multiple operators to deal with past and, reason and reasoning with about the future. So this is the logic that 
that allows you one to represent the reasoning about the past and reasoning about the future. And of course, reasoning about uh, the present. And these models, the models of model logic are typically can be represented. There are of course many semantic models, but the most popular one is called the cryptic, cryptic semantic models or possible world semantics. So in order to deal with propositional model logic, in order to use test bets to evaluate if artificial neural networks could or could not provide a mechanism to learn modalities or end in the end of the day to reach the multimodal reasoning that's so much needed these days, what we did was, okay, let's develop the first initial algorithms to provide a way of representing logical inference using artificial neural networks. And our question was, can one build an artificial neural network that will perform a modal inference or an inference in a modal logic and in order to do so, we use several test beds of uh, distributed reasoning, test beds that are used in AI in the domain of multi-agent systems, test beds that were presented, refined, and several of their properties were analyzed by, by Fagin, Halper, Moses, and Vardy in their famous book, Reasoning About Knowledge. So in order to do that, what we did was we took some of these test beds. One of them is the famous uh, Mudge Children puzzle and many other test beds like the Monte Hall puzzle or the Wiseman puzzle. And we started building artificial neural networks that would solve those reasoning process. So the important thing here in our approach is that we are building systems that can learn to reason about logical rules. It's not about systems that will extract the information purely from bunches of data, from huge amounts of data. No, our approach is the following. We take a logical reasoning rule, we define an artificial neural network that has an architecture that computes that logic-based rule, and then we use, of course, uh, backpropagation or effective algorithms, off-the-shelf algorithms that can learn to perform the logical, those logical rules. And here I just use an example. This is a kind of uh, logical-based rule that one uses in, in model logic and in a finite domain, that's of course is domain of the data that you are given when you are training a system, we are capable of showing that those systems could solve such puzzles, that such systems could, that such uh, algorithms that we developed could implement reasoning rules to deal with model reasoning. And this opens the door and this suggests the idea that we can have multimodalities and multimodal reasoning in artificial neural networks. For instance, this algorithm here that I'm presenting, so the details are not important, the details are in the paper, they represent a way of building a neural network that deals with the past operator with the previous time operator in temporal logic. And for every operator of modal logic, you can build an artificial neural network that will learn the logical inference rules that are capable of deriving truths at certain points of time, if you're dealing with temporal logics, or deriving rules about knowledge, if you have ages interacting and reasoning about their knowledge and also reasoning about the knowledge of those with which they are interacting. So the key here, the key result here is that it's possible, for instance, for model or for temporal logic programs that are, let's say, extensions of prologue that can deal with time or extensions of prologue that can deal with modalities, it's possible to build artificial neural networks that will compute the result of the prologue problems or prologue programs. So in the end of the day, what we have shown here that in principle, one can build an artificial neural network that will reason and that will reason in a principal way using logical rules that are sound. So this opens you know, an interesting perspective now that people are interested in multimodal reason using connectionist modal logics that's our approach to investigate how multimodal reasoning in language models can be performed or how multimodal reasoning in neurosymbolic AI can be performed these days. And we showed already in the past that by principle, those rules can be learned in the system. For instance, we, have, we can have uh, rules that represent the future time. And this is all explained um, in our papers and uh, in our book on connections temporal logic. And uh, there are ways of uh, representing those algorithms. But the point here is that what we make sure, make, make sure that is understood is that 
temporal evolution and temporal evolution of knowledge and even reasoning over knowledge that evolves in time is something that we have studied for a long time and something that uh, can contribute to the current debate on building multimodal systems or building multimodalities to reason about the current language models, the current foundation models that can be seen as we're going to see uh, later in this talk, as Stephen Wolfram said, as a great opportunity to integrate the two schools of uh, artificial neural networks and logic-based rules. Uh, I also have to make um, a point here that we apply this approach. It's not only a theoretical approach. We have one stud student that developed his PhD thesis on um, combining uh, a model checker with a learning engine. And the, the key principle here is that from an initial description of a model, and uh, this initial uh, description of a model is input to um, to a model checker, and using the counter examples produced by the by the model checker, one can learn how to refine the specification. So this kind of approach also works in practice and works in a very important field. That's the field of uh, software engineering, the field of model checking, and the field of building safety systems. So what are some of the open challenges that we have at the moment? In our paper, we also make the case that, uh, of course, there is a need for richer systems, the need for developing systems that are semantically sound, and also efficiency is very important. But today, with the large number um, of models that we have in AI, large language models that are dealing with complex uh, systems and that are dealing, of course, with the complexity of the huge number of tokens, huge number of parameters of these training systems, and understanding exactly what's going on in these systems and their understanding what is an artificial intelligence uh, or artificial neural network model doing, a complex artificial neural network model doing, one has to find ways of extracting the knowledge from those larger large language models or from those large artificial neural network models that is, uh, and those models have to be explainable. And so in order to explain it, we need richer language to explain. And the language that better explains relations in computer science is first order logic. It's the logic that deals um, with the first, uh, the first understanding of quantification, like universal and existential quantification. And to explain not only the entire model or local network interactions or our interaction with these models, perhaps this is one of the key challenges that we have at the moment in uh, neurosymbolic artificial intelligence. The second point that we wanna make is the, the point of building uh, systems that present uh, common sense reasoning. Some people have claimed already that language models or current AI models have beaten the, the Turing uh, the Turing test have you know have have passed the Turing test, but what we have seen at the moment that there are many open challenges with respect to common sense and efficient combinatorial reasoning. We know that uh, when we are dealing with common sense reasoning, uh, there is a huge complexity in terms of the degrees of freedom and the ways that people reason. And uh, some researchers have also uh, claimed that uh, we have to go beyond models that are predictive. We need models that are also prescriptive because in science, building models that are uh, predictive is important, but building models that are prescriptive is also relevant. So this balance between prediction and prescription and uh, is also connected to building systems that can be built in a safe way, referring to the first point, but also in order to build systems that are uh, that have, present common sense reasoning, uh, that those systems will have to deal and will have to tackle the combinatorial explosion of possibilities when we are dealing with our own reasoning. And finally, uh, the key point that we are seeing at the moment in terms of large language models is the issue of uh, reinforcement learning with human feedback. But we cannot forget that we are, we are interacting with language models, we are using natural language, which is by definition is symbolic. Some people like the prompt engineering, uh, people like people who are developing ways of uh, extracting information, effectively really form large language models using in, in, using, as I mentioned, multimodal reason, are people who are using and making use of effective ways of communicating with those systems. And those effective way, using natural language or using a kind of programming language inspired in natural language, is of course a neurosymbolic approach. Because we are expressing our knowledge, we're expressing our logic. The prompt engineers or the prompt programmers, they are using symbolic reason to interact with language models. So here, 
In order to build those systems that truly understand what's actually going on, we need a semantic definition for neurosymbolic AI. We need a semantic definition for this kind of language that we're built that interact with large language models. What I mean is, of course, we have all the language models based on, on the on all the data that have, have been trained. However, our interaction with those language models is a symbolic interaction, is a reasoning, uh, is a reasoning form of expressing our thoughts using a natural language that is becoming more and more structured as prompt engineering is developing over the years. So finally, what I make, uh, what I make sure here is that uh, the combination of machine learning and symbolic reasoning is an important alternative to the problem of reasoning and learning. And also one of the key things here is that people are realizing that we are gathering more and more data development systems that are richer and richer with huge amounts of data, but we have to go to a point where you are also capable of offering alternatives to large language models and building systems with less amount of data. This is, this is also very relevant from a user point of view because not everyone will have access to those huge large language models. Those large language models will be accessible by a limited number of perhaps uh, corporations, by a limited number of universities. And, and even if you think in terms of a, a bigger picture, who is going to have access to those AI systems uh, uh, in terms of you know, the north-south south divide between the northern uh, the northern world and, the, and, the, and the, the developing countries in the south where I come from. So what kind of world we are building in terms of AI technologies if everything that we need is not, you know, is based on technology that are very expensive and they need all the data that they can gather from uh, the world. And finally, going beyond first order logic learning, going beyond uh, the current models that we have is something very relevant. So the current trend of research towards seeking uh, multimodal reasoning is something that, again, points out to using different kinds of logic. So if you want to, to deal with images, if you want to deal with space, if you want to deal with time, those multimodalities, they have an answer in logic-based research. And those logic-based research, those logic-based research that was done over many years and decades in, in computer science by means of temporal logics or modal logics can offer perhaps some alternatives to build richer AI models. So that's the point I, uh, I wanna make. And I will finalize with uh, the point made by uh, Seth Koschreiter, um, a prominent researcher who created with uh, Jürgen Schmidhuber uh, LSTMs, as you, you all know. And Sepp Hoschreiter that has claimed that, again, in 2022, that in order to build uh, broader AI systems in the Nartigan communication of the ACM, he says that uh, broader AI systems need to be systems that can deal with concepts such as knowledge and interaction with different human cognitive abilities, adaptability, robustness, abstraction, reasoning, efficiency. So those systems, they go beyond the narrow AI systems that are they demand task-specific skills. And Sepp Koschreiter points out that perhaps graph neural networks can be one of the important alternatives towards this effort. And graph neural networks, again, are systems that allow for a specific way of representing interactions, specific ways of dealing with different structures, with arbitrary structures, but also they're a way of representing a neurosymbolic approach because those graph neural networks, they have been shown recently in the literature that it can solve a number of very relevant combinatorial problems, a number of very relevant problems in symbolic AI that can be solved under a neural network or under a neurosymbolic AI approach. So he, here, there is an effort in the community to, breed, to build bridges between the symbolic AI community and the connectionist AI community. And there are alternatives. One is the logic-based approach based on model logics, for instance, and the other is the graph neural network based approach. And there are even recent results that show bridges between those two approaches. And perhaps this can be the solution towards building richer AI, AI applications and building richer neurosymbolic AI applications. Thank you very much for your attention.